All right. Um, welcome, everyone, to today's Monarch Cybersecurity Seminar, which will probably be the last one of the year. Uh, today, we are very happy to welcome Tomoyuki Morimae, who is an associate professor at Yukawa Institute uh, for Theoretical Physics at Kyoto University in Japan. Uh, he got his PhD degree from the same Tokyo University in 2009, and his research interest is in quantum complexity theory and quantum cryptography, which will be the topic of today. And particularly, he will talk to us about quantum commitments and signatures without one-way functions. Um, thank you very much, Tomoyuki. Uh, and I'll let you go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Can you see this slide? Uh, yep, yeah, all good. OK, so uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And also, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to talk about some recent results, uh, including our results uh, about uh, quantum cryptography. So uh, uh, this is a joint work uh, with uh, Takashi Yamakawa of NTT and Kyoto University. So, uh, First, uh, assuming uh, some audiences are not familiar with uh, quantum information, so let me uh, quickly uh, review uh, some basics of uh, quantum physics. So if you have some question, or, uh, please ask uh, freely. And so uh, in quantum physics, uh, a state or a system is represented by a complex vector, and a time evolution or uh, some computation on input this state uh, is uh, represented by applying a unitary operator u on this uh, vector. And uh, in quantum physics, we do some measurement to get uh, classical information. And uh, this measurement is uh, a set of uh, projection operators. So, uh, ah, okay. so uh, this uh, pi k is a projection operator. And uh, summation over all k should be equal to uh, the identity operator. And uh, if we do this measurement on the state psi, then uh, we get a result k uh, with this probability. So this is a, a rule in quantum physics. And basically, this is enough to do everything. Uh, but sometimes we use a more general setup, which is uh, more convenient. And the state, uh, quantum state, is uh, an operator uh, that satisfies trace of this is equal to 1 and also non-negative. And also time evolution of this quantum state uh, is represented in the following way. So we have this initial state, input state, and we add some ancillary state. And then uh, we time evolve the entire system by using this unitary. And finally, we trace out this uh, B register. So finally, we get some state on register A. So this is a more general uh, time evolution. And the measurement uh, can be also generalized in the following way. So uh, what we call POVM measurement. So this is a set of some operators. And each operator is a non-negative operator. And a sum of all operators should be equal to the identity. So this is a POVM measurement. And if uh, we do this POVM measurement on this state row, uh, we get the result of K uh, with this probability. Okay. So this is uh, the rule of uh, quantum physics. And so uh, now, uh, so uh, quantum physics is known to be very strange. Uh, there are many uh, strange phenomena uh, that do not exist in classical physics. So for example, we have a quantum superposition, which means that uh, two different, so we can consider superposition to different quantum states. And this is different from the uh, mixture, classical probabilistic mixture. So this does not mean that with probability, some probability we have this, and with some probability we have this. This is uh, just a classical mixture, but this quantum superposition is not equivalent to that. And also we have quantum entanglement, uh, which is some uh, very strong correlations that 
do not exist in classical physics. And also we have some uncertainty relation, uh, which roughly means that uh, if uh, we do measurement on the system uh, to get some information, the system is disturbed. And also we have no cloning, no cloning theorem, which means that a microscopic particle cannot be cloned. So in classical physics, a uh, uh, system can be copied in principle, but in quantum case, in principle, you cannot uh, clone uh, these systems. And these strange phenomena are used for quantum information processing. So for example, we know that this quantum superposition is essential for uh, quantum speed up in quantum computation. And also in cryptography, we know that this quantum superposition has some negative effect. So uh, in cryptography, the adversary uh, can query some oracle, but if the adversary is quantum, uh, the adversary can query oracle in this superposition way. And this type of new attack was not considered in classical cryptography. So we need new proof to show the security against this type of advocacy. So this is a negative effect. And as far as I know, there is no positive application of this quantum superposition to cryptography. And this quantum entanglement is used for a quantum key distribution. Uh, this is a quantum version of a key exchange. So in classical case, key exchange requires some uh, complexity assumption, uh, which should be stronger than the existence of one-way functions. But in quantum case, uh, if you can send some quantum particle, a uh, key exchange is possible without any computational assumptions. And also, uh, uncertainty relation can be used for certified deletion. So certified deletion is some uh, new uh, cryptographic primitive. Uh, where uh, you can send some data to the remote server and the server uh, can delete this data and the server can show that this data is certainly deleted. And so classically this is impossible because classical data is in principle uh, can be copied. So malicious server just copy the data and delete the original data, but the server still can keep the copy but in quantum case, this is impossible. So if the uh, server issue the correct certificate of the deletion, then the data is uh, certainly deleted. And this uh, can be realized by using this uncertainty deletion. And also, no cloning is uh, used uh, for quantum money. As you know, so quantum money is some uh, money scheme, uh, which is uh, unfor which cannot be forged. And so in this way, uh, this quantum storage phenomena uh, has been, uh, have been applied to uh, cryptography. And there is some uh, my open problem. So one open problem is, is there any uh, positive application of quantum superposition? So as I said, uh, quantum superposition has some negative effect in cryptography, uh, but is there any some positive application of quantum superposition? And second, uh, my open problem is, uh, is there any some another unknown quantum storage phenomena that is useful for crypto. So we know that quantum superposition, quantum entanglement, uncertainty relation, no cloning are useful for cryptography. Uh, but is there any other, some new property which is useful for uh, cryptography? Okay, uh, so uh, now I uh, move to uh, cryptography. And so I think uh, you know this. Uh, very well, uh, but uh, so in cryptography, we have two uh, different types of security definitions. One is uh, the statistical security, and the other is a computational security. So statistical security roughly means that the, it is secure against any unbounded adversary. So for example, we have one-time path scheme. So in one-time path, the sender and receiver share some secret key. And the sender uh, compute this cipher text, and the receiver can uh, decrypt this cipher text because he knows the secret key. But the adversary cannot run this message because this is uh, completely random uh, from the viewpoint of this adversary. And this is secure against any computationally unbounded adversary. And the other definition is computational security, uh, which uh, roughly means that the security is guaranteed under some complexity assumptions like factoring is hard or LWE is hard or something like that. And for example, we have public key encryption. 
Uh, in that case, the security is guaranteed against uh, only some computationally bounded advance. Uh, so this is a classical cryptography. And in quantum case, we also have uh, inform statistically secure uh, quantum cryptography. And the history of this statistically secure quantum cryptography is uh, very old. So uh, we have a quantum money with NAS quantum money or uh, quantum key distribution, coin flipping, or blind quantum computation, verification quantum computation. So this blind quantum computation is some uh, scheme where a client can delegate the computation, quantum computation, to a remote quantum server in such a way that uh, no information is leaked to the server. And this verification quantum computation is uh, the client can check whether the uh, remote uh, server is correctly doing quantum computation or not. And these schemes are known to be possible uh, in a statistically secure way by using quantum physics. And also recently, uh, the research of computationally secure quantum cryptography uh, becomes very active. And so actually there were some papers about computational secure quantum cryptography in old days, but uh, this research uh, became, be, became very active uh, recently, and especially because of the breakthrough by Mahalev in 2018, uh, this computational secure quantum cryptography uh, becomes very active. So she showed uh, that uh, quantum free homomorphic encryption is possible by assuming LWE. And also, this verification of quantum computation is possible for a completely classical crime. And this uh, new result is some uh, nice uh, breakthrough for the recent active research of computationally secure quantum cryptography. And this, uh, my talk, uh, also focus on this uh, computationally secure quantum cryptography. So in classical uh, complexity-based cryptography, uh, we have many primitives like public key encryption, key exchange, multi-party computation, or one-way function, and pseudo-random generator, and so on. And actually, uh, we already know that uh, we have some quantum advantage in cryptography. So for example, uh, the most famous one is that uh, key exchange is possible uh, without any computational assumption. So in classical case, because key exchange is in cryptomania, people believe that uh, some uh, complexity assumption stronger than the existence of one-way function is necessary to achieve key exchange. But in quantum case, uh, we can realize key exchange without any computational assumption. And also, uh, we know that uh, non-interactive commitment is possible uh, by using quantum physics. So in classical case, uh, it is known that uh, constant round statistical hiding commitment is impossible in a black box way. But in quantum case, uh, we can achieve non-interactive commitments, even for this stati statistical hiding one. So this is another quantum advantage. And also, uh, recently, uh, people showed that multi-party computation can be constructed from uh, quantum commitments. Uh, so this is uh, very surprising, because in classical case, uh, multi-party computation is believed to be impossible to be constructed from uh, commitments, because commitments is in uh, mini uh, But if you can send quantum states, you can uh, achieve multi-party computation uh, from uh, quantum commitments. So this is another interesting quantum advantage. And in addition to these uh, advantage, we also know that there are many new quantum cryptographic primitives that have no classical analog. So for example, uh, quantum money, we have quantum money, which is money that cannot be forged, and also certified Asia, which is the primitive I explained previously. And also we have one-shot signature. This is some type of digital signature where you can sign only once. Also, uh, we have quantum copy protection, which is some uh, copy protection scheme by using uh, quantum physics. So in this way, uh, we already know that uh, quantum uh, uh, physics uh, some nice, uh, gives some nice advantage in cryptography. And so again, I have some uh, uh, open problems. So one open problem is, is there any advantage in, in public key encryption? So we know that key exchange is possible statistically, secure way, but we don't know 
whether this PK is possible uh, by using quantum physics. And actually, recently we show that uh, P PK is possible from non abelian group actions. And classically, it is not known, it is not known whether uh, PK is possible or not from this non abelian group actions. But if you can use quantum physics, you can construct a PK. Uh, but uh, still, uh, I want to know whether there is some nice quantum advantage in public key encryption. And also, is there any some concept of quantum pseudorandom generators? So this uh, pseudorandom generator uh, is some uh, quantum, uh, classical uh, deterministic algorithm. But if we consider a quantum algorithm, then is there any some nice advantage uh, in this uh, pseudorandom generators? Okay, anyway, so uh, in a uh, complexity based classical cryptography, uh, it is very famous that a uh, one way function is uh, the most uh, essential element uh, because uh, all, most all uh, classical cryptographic primitives uh, imply uh, one way functions. So, therefore, if one way functions do not exist, uh, then all these primitives do not exist as well. So, uh, people believe uh, that uh, one way function is the most fundamental element in classical cryptography. Okay? Uh, but, uh, so the question is what happened in a quantum case? So, is there, so is this also the case in quantum cryptography? So, one way function is uh, again the most fundamental element in uh, quantum cryptography. And actually, the answer uh, seems to be no. Uh, so, recent results, uh, including our papers, uh, show that uh, in quantum cryptography, uh, one-way functions are not necessarily the most fundamental element. Uh, and this is uh, some main uh, topic of uh, my uh, talk. So, uh, is there any question, by the way? If you have some question, I can. Uh, you, you can interrupt and ask question. Okay, so, uh, so and uh, the important uh, primitive is uh, pseudo random state generators, uh, which is a quantum by quantum analog of pseudo random generators. So this was introduced by uh, G. Liu Song in 2018. And so the pseudo random state generator is a QPT algorithm, quantum polynomial time algorithm, uh, state gen that takes n bit storing k as input and output and n qubit quantum state, phi k. And the security is defined in the following way. The challenger chooses a single bit b, 0 or 1. And if b equals 0, uh, the uh, challenger uh, samples n bit string k and generates t copies of phi k by running this state gain algorithm. And the challenger sends this quantum state to the adversary. Uh, if b equals 1, the challenger uh, samples a uh, hard random states. This is just uh, completely uniformly random states uh, from the state of space. And t copies of this hard random states is sent to the adversary. And the security means that the, uh, any QPT adversary cannot distinguish this or this for any uh, polynomial t. So the adversary uh, who receives polynomially many copies of this state cannot distinguish whether this is a pseudo-random state or a uh, truly really random state. So this is a definition of pseudo-random state generators. And so they are constructed these pseudo-random state generators from uh, post-quantum one-way functions. And we also uh, define some special case of these pseudo random state generators, uh, what we call one PRSG. And the definition is equivalent to this definition, except that t is equal to one. So in this case, the adversary can access only a single copy of this quantum state. And in that case, the average uh, of a hard random state is just a maximally mixed state. Okay? And so they uh, also uh, show that uh, private key quantum money schemes can be constructed from pseudo random state generators. So private key quantum money scheme is defined as follows. The challenger uh, samples secret key K 
and uh, generate quantum money state uh, 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 by running this QPD algorithm, mint algorithm. And then the challenger sends T copies of this money states to the receiver, uh, sorry, to the adversary. And the QPT adversary uh, must return some quantum state law. And the challenger uh, counts the number of uh, valid monies. And if the number is increased, then the uh, challenger uh, accepts. And the security uh, requires that the probability that the challenger accepts is uh, negligibly small. And so uh, intuitive understanding of why uh, this uh, PRSG works as quantum money is, uh, so high random state is known to be unclonable because this is completely random. So you cannot clone these random states. And by the definition of uh, PRSG, uh, this money state is a computationally indistinguishable from high random states. And that's why this state is also uh, unclonable. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, they uh, introduced some generalized version of pseudorandom state generators, what they call pseudorandom unitary. So this uh, is some fa fa family of unitary operators uh, that satisfy the following two properties. So first, they should be uh, efficiently implementable. Okay. Secondly, uh, they are indistinguishable from a uh, truly random unitary operation. So for any uh, QPT adversary A, that can query Oracle polynomially many times, uh, this adversary cannot distinguish whether it is querying to this pseudorandom unitary or querying to this uh, completely random unitary. So this is a definition of PRU. Uh, but uh, at this moment, there is no known construction of uh, this PRU. So it is an open problem to find some construction, uh, instantiation of this uh, PRU. Okay, so uh, let's uh, back to uh, our uh, result. So uh, in this uh, paper, uh, 2022, uh, we showed that two results. So our first result is a construct of, construction of quantum commitments from pseudorandom state generators. So because, as I said, uh, multi-party computation can be uh, constructed from commitments, so this also means that uh, multi-party computation can be constructed from pseudorandom state generators. And also, uh, our second result is uh, the construction of quantum digital signatures from pseudorandom state generators. And the reason why this is interesting is uh, Kretschmer uh, showed in 2021 uh, that uh, pseudorandom state generator exists uh, even if uh, BQP is equal to QMA. So QMA is quantum version of NP. And if BQP is equal to QMA, uh, NP is contained in BQP. So this means that uh, all post-quantum classical cryptographic primitives are broken. And in particular, uh, no post-quantum one-way function exists. But still, even in that case, pseudo-random state generators exist. And this result uh, has been recently improved by these people. And they showed that uh, one PRSG exists uh, even if P is equal to NP. Okay, so this, uh, these results mean that uh, pseudorandom state generators can exist even if one-way function does not exist. And because we show that these primitives are constructed from pseudorandom state generators, so this means that uh, these primitives can exist even if one-way function does not exist. And uh, this suggests that a uh, one-way function is not necessarily the most fundamental element in quantum cryptography. Okay, and so also let me explain uh, concurrent work by Anansky and Yuen. And so they uh, showed uh, many results, but in particular, they showed the following four results. So first, uh, they introduced uh, pseudo-random function-like states. Uh, this is a quantum analog of pseudo-random function. And they showed that uh, pseudo-random uh, PRFS can be constructed from pseudo-random state generators. And they also constructed quantum commitments, and therefore multi-party computation, uh, from uh, PRFS. 
And they also constructed a quantum pseudo one time part from a uh, peer reference. So, this quantum pseudo one time part is a, a just a quantum version of secret key encryption. So, in secret key encryption, the sender and receiver share uh, some secret key escape, and the sender uh, generate cipher text, and the sender sends this cipher text to the receiver. The receiver can decrypt uh, this cipher text. And, but in this quantum case, uh, this cipher text is a quantum state. And because quantum states are unclonable, uh, we have to take care of the number of copies. The security means that uh, for any QPT adversary, we can get polynomially many copies of cipher text. Uh, the adversary cannot learn this message. So this is a quantum pseudo one type of scheme. And also, in order to avoid the trivial construction, the length of secret key should be uh, shorter than the message length. Because otherwise, we can achieve this uh, secret key encryption information theoretically. Okay. So, uh, let's back to our paper. And our first result is a construction quantum commitment from uh, pseudonym stage generators. So, now I explain the construction. So more precisely, uh, we constructed a computational hiding of statistical binding commitments from one PRSG. And uh, we uh, used the canonical form introduced in this paper. So the sender who wants to commit a single bit B uh, generates some quantum states. So if he wants to commit a single bit B, uh, B equals zero, then he generates these quantum states and uh, sends only this C register to the receiver. Uh, if he wants to commit uh, B equal 1, then he generates these states and sends only this uh, C register to the receiver. So this is the end of uh, the commitment phase. And in the opening phase, uh, the sender sends this bit B and also this uh, R register to the receiver. The receiver checks whether uh, this state is really this state or not. And if the state is really this state, uh, the receiver accepts uh, the, uh, this bit B. And we can show the uh, computational hiding and the statistical binding. For computational hiding, we have only to show that uh, the registered HD operator on this C register are computationally indistinguishable. And actually, this can be immediately shown from the definition of one PRSG, because as I said, uh, this is just a pseudo random state, and this is just a maximally mixed state. And by the definition of one PRSG, they are uh, computationally indistinguishable. And for statistical binding, uh, it is known that uh, we have only to show this property. So this means that. Uh, the reduced density operator on this register C are uh, statistically far uh, from it, with each other. And intuitive reason is uh, if they are far, then the sender cannot change this state to this state by acting only on this R register. Okay? And by a straightforward computation, we can show this statistical binding. So in this way, we can construct computational hiding of the statistical binding commitment from one PRSG. And actually, it is known that a flavor of commitments can be converted. And by using these results, we can also get a statistical hiding and computational binding commitments from computational hiding of statistical binding commitments. Okay. And our second result is uh, the construction of quantum digital signatures uh, from pseudo-random state generators. And uh, so to explain this uh, construction, uh, first uh, let me uh, uh, review the uh, construction of a classical one-time secure signature from classical one-way function, which is also known as Lamport signature. So the sender uh, choose samples, some uh, random uh, bit strings, K0 and K1, and they are used for a uh, secret key or signing key. And uh, the public key uh, or the verification key is just evaluation of this one-way function on input K0 and K1. 
and the signature for message 0 is just k0, and the signature for message 1 is uh, just k1. And verification is uh, computing this one-way function f on input the signature and check whether this is equal to the public key or not. And the security uh, intuitively comes from the one-wayness of this one-way function f. So the adversary can access this public key, but because of the one-wayness of uh, one-way function f, the adversary cannot compute this k0 or k1. Okay, so this is a classical case. And so uh, this suggests that we need some uh, quantum analog of uh, one-way functions. And actually, we introduced one-way state generators, uh, which is a QPT algorithm that takes n-bit string k as an input and outputs uh, an m-qubit contact state by k. The security is defined as follows. The challenger chooses k, n-bit string k, and send, uh, generates t copies of phi k. The challenger sends this state to the QPT adversary, and the adversary returns some n-bit string uh, k prime. And the uh, challenger check whether this k prime is correct or not. So correct means uh, the challenger uh, measure measures this quantum state with this basis, and if this result is obtained, he accepts. But if this result is obtained, he rejects. The security requires that uh, the probability that the challenger accepts is negligibly small. Okay? So this is the definition of one-way state generators. And we show that this one-way state generators can be constructed from pseudo-random state generators. And by the way, uh, in classical cryptography, we have some variants of one-way functions, like weak one-way functions or uh, distributional one-way functions. So in quantum case, we can also define uh, weak one-way state generators and distributional one-way state generators. And actually, they are shown to be equal to the uh, strong one-way state generators. Okay? And given this uh, quantum analog of one-way function, uh, we can construct a uh, one-time secure uh, quantum digital signature. The difference is, uh, instead of this uh, classical public key, now we use uh, this uh, quantum public key. And the verification is uh, used, uh, the verification is that of the one-way state generators. And the security is again shown by the one-wayness of the one-way state generators. So the uh, adversary can access this quantum public key, but uh, he cannot compute correct, correct k. Uh, from this quantum state by the definition of, uh, by the security of one-way state generators. And that's why the signature cannot be forged by this adversary. Okay, so in this way we can construct a one-time secure digital signatures. And recently we have shown that this one-time security can be improved to the Q-time secure one. But still we don't know how to construct uh, many time uh, secure signatures. So in classical case, we can construct many type uh, signatures by signing this public key. Uh, but unfortunately, in this case, this public key is quantum states. So we don't know how to sign this quantum state. And actually, in general, it is shown to be impossible to sign quantum states. So it is an open problem uh, whether we can construct many time secure signatures from this one-way state generator. Okay, so, uh, um, sorry, yeah. can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so in the previous slide, so when you said one time, from one time, you can construct Q time. So Q is kind of like polynomial in the security parameter, or uh, what is Q in this case? Uh, Q is uh, some uh, polynomial, but uh, uh, some fixed polynomial. So usually, mm -hmm. many times security, uh, this polynomial should be un unbounded. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Q should be fixed. Ah, okay. All right. okay. So uh, let me summarize uh, this uh, result of uh, this our paper. So we uh, construct quantum commitments from pseudo random state generators. And because a multi party computation can be constructed from quantum commitments, so this also means that multi party computation can be constructed from pseudo random state generators. And we also Constructed uh, kind of digital signatures uh, from pseudo-random state generators. 
。あの、because スドンのステージジェネレーターって、ジェネレーターズキャン、エグジスト、あ、イブンイフワンウェンファンションってのってエグジスト、あ、そう、this means that、uh,、あ、these primitives can be constructed without a one way functions。そう、あ、And in some、uh, remaining time, I、uh, explain some open problems. So, first, so because、uh, we know that a one way function is not necessarily the most fundamental element in quantum cryptography, the natural question is what is the most fundamental element in quantum cryptography? And recently,、uh, Brakelsky, Canetti, and Kian introduced some interesting concepts,、uh, what they call EFI. And the、uh, definition of EFI is the following. So, EFI is a QPT algorithm that outputs、uh, some quantum state, row zero or row one. And、uh, row, row zero and row one should satisfy the following properties. So, first, they are statistically distinguishable. So, their trace distance is large.、Uh, second,、uh, they should be computationally indistinguishable. So, this means that for any QPT adversary,、uh, row zero and row one are computationally indistinguishable. And so, in classical case,、uh, this type of classical distribution was already studied by Goldreich.、Uh, so, he studied、uh, some classical distribution that are statistically distinguishable but computationally indistinguishable. And he showed that such distributions are equivalent to the one way function. And in quantum case,、uh, these three people showed that this quantum analog of this Goldreich distribution, EFI, Uh, uh, equivalent to some primitive like commitments, oblivious transfer, or、uh, zero knowledge. So, this suggests that this EFI、uh, might be some、uh, fundamental element in、uh, quantum crypto. So, one important of the problem is whether this EFI is really the most fundamental element or not. And so, just、uh, in case,、uh, there are some、uh, very uh, Interesting paper by Brakowski. So he、uh, applied this、uh, quantum cryptography concept to some black hole physics. So、uh, actually, I'm not an expert of black hole. So、uh, some people say that、uh, there is some paradox in black hole. And to resolve this paradox, some、uh, existence of some hidden entanglement is necessary. So hidden entanglement means some entanglement can be extracted. In principle, this can be extracted. But computationally, very hard to ex extract this entanglement. And Brakowski recently、uh, used this EFI to construct this example. So uh, he uh, 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 encrypted some of this part of entanglement, and this key is contained as an index of this EFI. Now, because EFI, row zero and row one, can be、uh, statistically distinguishable, so in principle, you can unlock this、uh, encryption, you can extract the entanglement. But because they are computationally indistinguishable, so you cannot unlock uh, this uh, uh, encryption if your computational power is,、uh, is bad. And that's why this is computationally hard to extract this、uh, entanglement. Okay? Okay. So, and,、uh, recently,、uh, we、uh, studied some、uh, relations among、uh, many primitives. And so, as I said,、uh, quantum money can be constructed from pseudo randomness generators. And、uh, also, quantum, one -time part,、uh, quantum pseudo one time part can be constructed from、uh, pseudo random state generators. And in this paper, we show that one way state generators can be constructed from quantum money states.、Uh, quantum money. And also,、uh, I, I say that quantum digital signatures can be constructed from one way state generators, but actually they are equivalent. Okay? And also,、uh, so quantum pseudo one time part scheme assumes that adversary can get polynomially many copies of cybertics. And then、uh, we have, trivially, we can also construct a single, single copy quantum pseudo one time part scheme. So this means that adversary can get only a single copy of cybertics. And、uh, so we show that EFI can be constructed from this single copy quantum pseudo one time part scheme. Okay, so in this way, we know some relations、uh, between primitives, and the open problem is whether we can show、uh, this direction. So, in classical cryptography, a pseudo random generator is equivalent to one way function. So, this、uh, direction should be shown in quantum case, but unfortunately, I don't know how to show this. And also, in classical cryptography, a one way function is equivalent to secret key encryption. So, this should be correct, but I don't know how to show this. And also in classical case, one way function is equivalent to EFI, classical EFI. 
but I don't know how to show the equivalence of these two primitives. At, at least, uh, we show that uh, some restricted version of one-way generators is equivalent to this EFO. This is some uh, interesting open problem. And finally, uh, so another uh, interesting open problem is what is a classical complexity assumption necessary for the existence of these primitives? So Kretschmer showed that uh, BQP is not equal to PP is necessary for the existence of pseudo-randomness generators. Okay, but for other primitives, we don't know what is a uh, classical complexity assumption necessary for the existence of these primitives. And in particular, uh, this is very difficult because we can no longer use shadow tomography. So let me quickly explain what is shadow tomography. So uh, shadow tomography is some uh, nice technique uh, to get some information on quantum state, uh, even if only polynomially many copies of quantum states are available. So the, uh, uh, so some polynomial number of quantum states is uh, given to this person, and C runs some quantum polynomial time operation to get some classical information, which is called a uh, shadow. And by using this classical shadow, uh, she can compute expected estimation of expectation value of any operators, any observables. And the point is, uh, even if the number of operators is exponentially many, still polynomial number of copies is sufficient. But also, this quantum part is enough for a uh, polynomial time. So, of course, this classical part takes a long time because this is tomography. But the point is, uh, quantum this part is only polynomial operation. Okay? And by using this shadow tomography, Kretschmer showed that if uh, BQP is equal to PP, then pseudorandom state generator do not exist. So because uh, so the adversary receives this pseudorandom states or truly random states, and C uh, generate this uh, classical shadow in quantum polynomial time, and then uh, she send this classical information to the PP oracle. And the PP oracle check uh, whether there exists some K such that uh, this state is close to some particular K. So if this is pseudo-random state, there exists such K. But if this is completely random state, there is no such K. So the adversary, the oracle, can check whether there exists K or not. And he showed that this uh, check can be done in a post-PQP uh, operation. So post-PQP means that you can run some uh, quantum polynomial time algorithm, and then finally you do some post-selection to get some specific result. And this Aronson showed that, that this post BQP is equal to PP. So PP is enough to uh, check uh, this, uh, the existence of K. Okay? So in summary, uh, he showed that if BQP is equal to PP, then a pseudo non generator do not exist. Okay, so this is his result. So one interesting open problem is can we generalize, can we apply this shadow tomography technique to other uh, primitives? And unfortunately, uh, this these primitives are very difficult because in these primitives, the adversary uh, can get only a single copy of a quantum state. And because shadow tomography requires polynomially many quantum states, so we don't know how to use shadow tomography technique for uh, these primitives. Okay. Okay, so uh, that is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Tomoyaki, for your very interesting talk. I, I learned a lot from your book. <laughs> well, this is not really my expertise, but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, while the others think about their questions, maybe I'll start with uh, my questions. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, you can use the chat or raise your hand and I'll uh, unmute you. Uh, I think in one of the open problems, you mentioned that uh, like whether the EFIs are the most fundamental one in the uh, quantum crypto case, but I think you showed also that PRST implies EFI, no? Maybe in slide 31, for example? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Ah, yeah, for example, this one. Yeah. So doesn't that mean PRST is more fundamental than EFI? Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, so more fundamental means, uh, so because, so, so PRSD can construct this EFI, so this means this primitive is stronger than this EFI. 
So this means even if this PRSG are broken, still mm-hmm. EFI can exist. Yeah. So in that sense, EFI is more fundamental than PRSG. Ah, but in the classical case, didn't you say that one-way function is the most fundamental one? Yeah, yeah. so in classical case, uh, well, so for example, in classical case, one-way function and commitment is equivalent. And ah, because people... they are equivalent, okay. But yeah, so m- maybe one nice example is, so for example, public key encryption implies one-way function, mm-hmm. but one function will not imply uh, public key encryption. So in that mm. case, one-way function is more fundamental than public key encryption. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, I see. Okay. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm. Makes sense. Uh, does anyone else have any questions before I move on to my other question? <laughs> uh, I have a question as well. So and yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, thank you for the nice talk. Um, yeah, I was wondering if so. Is it known whether the quantum digital signatures imply implies EFI or? Uh, or PRSGs? Yeah, actually, I don't know. So I tried to show uh, quantum digital signature imply PRSG or imply EFI, but unfortunately, at this moment, I, I don't know how to show this. Okay, okay. And, uh, yeah. and in, the, in the quantum signatures, is it correct that the public key of the signature is, is a quantum state, but the signature is a classical? Uh, yeah, so uh, public verification key is a quantum state, uh, but a signature is just a classical state. Oh, okay. Are there also signatures where, where it's the other way around, like the signature is quantum and the public key is classical? Uh, yeah. For example, you can consider this type of quantum digital signature. So, for example, this signature can be quantum state, uh, but at least uh, in our construction, uh, we we constructed this this signature. So, of course, you can consider. Uh, such, such quantum digital signature, but uh, as far as I know, there is no known construction you are quantum digital signature. Okay. And they, okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions from anyone else? Uh, yeah, I have, I have a question maybe. Uh, about the uh, also these slides. Um, so you say there's an open problem of constructing many times signatures based on this uh, quantum one time mm-hmm. signature. So um, because in classical setting, um, the one time signature can be converted to many time signature using Merkle trees, right? So for mm-hmm. example, like X MSS that signature scheme. And um, so I'm wondering why we can't do the similar thing in the quantum setting. Yeah. So in a uh, classical case, uh, if you use this uh, Merkle tree, uh, you sign public key, right? You, you, may, you put the signature on public key. Um, and, yeah, so actually um, from my understanding, I think the public key are like hushed. So the one time public key are hushed together as a, because those one-time public keys as leaf nodes, and they will be hushed to uh, to obtain, for example, a root node, such that the final root node would be the um, many-time public key, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so we, we can, so uh, we don't know how to do that in quantum case, so because this public key is a quantum state. Yeah. In that case, we don't know how to uh, sign this public key. Well, maybe so we don't know how to hash this public key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we don't know any hash function that takes quantum state as an input. Right. Uh, so if you if you do hashing, you get, I guess you get a, a Q time signature scheme where Q is the number of leaves that you hash. So the, 
And the, the key generation will take time proportional to Q, right? Maybe. I, I guess when you say many times signature, you want the key generation to be uh, not proportional to Q, right? Um... Because then the running time will not be polynomial if it's an unbounded, will not um... be a fixed polynomial, right? You want the running time of key generation to be a fixed polynomial, even if Q is not. Uh... Yes, yeah, so I guess that's also a problem with that. Uh, uh, mm, mm. Yeah, I guess many time means kind of like exponentially many time. It's not just okay. polynomial many time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a polynomial main thing. Uh, so this means, so the, the adversary can query the sign oracle unbounditly many times. Yeah. yeah, the degree of the polynomial doesn't have to be bounded by the key generation. Uh, yeah. um, any other questions from anyone else? All right. uh, yeah, I'll ask one more question. So in the classical case, kind of we, we know that we can't have statistically hiding and statistically binding commitment scheme. Is this also true in the quantum case or is there a both statistically hiding and binding commitments? Uh, sure. uh, so, yeah, actually, so also in quantum case, uh, we know that it is impossible to achieve uh, both statistical hiding and statistical binding. Oh, okay. So even okay. if we quantum, State, we cannot achieve that. Oh, okay, that's okay. Yeah, because you were talking about like some things that are true in the classical case, but not, not true in the uh, quantum yeah, case. Yeah. I, I was wondering if this was yeah, one of those. Yeah, okay. yeah, I should have explained that. So, we also I explained some uh, quantum advantage uh, in cryptography, but also we have some uh, limitation. Uh, so, for example, as I say, uh, we cannot achieve a statistical hiding and a statistical binding commitment. Mm. Also, um, yeah, actually, uh, and also maybe in oblivious ones, uh, no, um, uh, I would, sorry, so I, I don't, I don't remember now, but there are okay, some, okay. some limitations yeah. and so even yeah. So there are some proof that even if you use quantum, still we can not do such tasks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I don't. I, I don't remember. But there are yeah, some. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I guess if there are no more questions, uh, I think we may uh, conclude the session here. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Tomoyaki, for your very interesting talk. Yeah, as I must, I really learned a lot from the talk. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, hope to see everyone in the next seminar. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you.